Sexton trying to get loose. He'll fire. He knocks it down. But Morrow slammed it home. Garland upstairs. Oh! Sexton inside. Oh. A thunderous dunk. And Allen blocked the shot at the rim. We'll be down in three minutes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can get a nice okay. job again. Welcome to the Chase Down Podcast, part of the Cavs media family. I'm your host, Justin Rowan. Support for this podcast and the following message comes from Zoom. Half a million businesses connect using Zoom, a single platform for phone, chat, workspaces, events, apps, and video. Zoom enables real-time collaboration for teams around the globe. Zoom, how the world connects. And connecting with me now live, head coach of your Cleveland Cavaliers, JB Bickerstaff. JB, how are you doing today? I'm great, thank you for having us. <laughs> thank you so much for agreeing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Round of applause. Also joining us today, President of Basketball Operations, Kobe Altman. Kobe, thank you, thank you so thank much. You. How are you doing today? Great to be here. We're excited about this week. I, I could not be more excited to be here. This is a great experience. And that is my co-host, Carter Rodriguez. Carter. I, appreciate you. You, I appreciate you saving the best for last. And really, I think we should really make this experience all about us. Yes. As it, much as we can. The, <laughs> These guys are just here to hang out. Right. Uh, absolutely. Is somebody else coming? So no, the best no. for last. No. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh okay. Okay, JB. Sorry, my bad. I, I've been excited for this basically since it's been announced that the All-Star Game was going to be in Cleveland. Uh, I had already made a decision when the news came down that I was going to fly down. I had to be here for this event. But, Coach, what is it, what, how rewarding is it to see the Cleveland Cavaliers players represented in all three nights on All-Star Weekend? I mean, it's huge. Uh, you know, you think about the NBA selecting your city for the 75th uh, celebration to begin with, and then to be able to have the representation that we have. Uh, it speaks to the organization as a whole. It speaks to the guys and the work that they put in, uh, the job that Kobe in the front office has done in bringing that talent together. Um, you know, we're very fortunate to be where we are right now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and, and Kobe, I, I have to imagine it feels good to see some validating. of those decisions. Those validating. Tough, validating. To see some of those tough decisions that you've had to make throughout the team building process really pay off this early in their careers to have these guys uh, rewarded for their hard work over All-Star Weekend. Yeah, I mean, we, we talked about it with, with Coach J.B. Bickerstaff, who's done a wonderful job this year, is we wanted to have a homegrown, developed, raised, drafted <laughs> in Cleveland represent us for the All-Star Week and weekend and game. And it might have seemed like a long shot a couple years ago, but mm. the work that Coach Biggerstaff has done and his, his, his staff, um, day by day, seeing the guys get better, um, seeing the work that they put in and giving them pathways to be successful was really, really important for us. Um, and then just, just overall, we're, we're just a very prideful about this city um, you know, this city puts on a great party. Um, I'm wearing my, my Cleveland hoodie I like right it. here. This is designed by Kid Cudi, right? <laughs> and I think we all can puff our chest out a little bit, right, because of what we accomplished as a, as a team but as a city. Mm. The world's going to be watching, right? So Cleveland to the world is what we're saying. This is a world-class city, and it's exciting. And we have representatives in every single day this week, and it's really exciting. So... Here we go. <laughs> I do want to ask a little bit about the city of Cleveland, and and we can start with you, Coach. You know, obviously, pe people from all over the world are going to be converging on the city for this event. What are people going to learn about Cleveland that they might not have known coming in? I mean, just all the great things that are here. Um, you know, it's the same for us. In years past, when you're an opponent, you just come here and play the games. You get in and you get out. But the longer you're here, uh, you realize all the things that are here, uh, the diverse attractions, uh, the culture that's here, but most importantly, the people. Uh, you know, our fan base is unbelievable. They're a knowledgeable fan base. They're supportive. They've got your back. Uh, and they know how to show you a good time. So uh, when you come to visit, uh, you'll definitely appreciate it. And Kobe, same question to you. So this is, uh, this is year 10 for me in Cleveland, Ohio. That's crazy. Ohio. That's um, actually crazy. <laughs> start out living downtown, right? Right, like two blocks away, 668. I was one of the first residents of, of the Metropolitan at the Nine, which is, uh, if you remember, that whole corridor was empty, right? And now we look at what the city has become downtown, its attraction, 
uh, the restaurants, all of it. Um, and now my wife makes me live in the suburbs, but I was a downtown. Listen, a lot of people's <laughs> wives, a lot of people's I, wives I, make I, them I, live in the I suburbs. I was downtown, I hear you there. tried and true, walking these streets. Um, but it's just, you know, for me, just to see the momentum of the city, um, you know, grow as, as, as we grown as well. And yeah, we have four unbelievable finals runs, but the fans stuck with us through the last three years. Mm -hmm. And now it's even more gratifying to come out of it with an unbelievable pathway to success, sustainable success, some young talent that's going to be around for a very long time. We have a head coach that's going to be around for a long time that's leading this team uh, to some, some, some really fun times. So um, it's all part of this growth evolution of, of a city um, that's on the world stage right now. We couldn't be more, more excited and more proud. I, I wanted to ask you about uh, our two all-stars and starting with JB again. I remember uh, we had Larry Nance on the pod last year. Uh, obviously, he has since uh, moved on, but he, he told us that, you know, Darius was the ceiling raiser for this team. Did you see this season coming for him? Like, I mean, it has been quite the breakout. Yeah, we, and it's, you know, it's interesting you say that. Like, when you go back through the beginning for Darius, every year he took incremental jumps. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, we watched the work he put in, not only on the court, but taking care of his body and taking the next steps that he would need. Uh, and we knew something special was coming. Um, you know, he's got an amazing personality where people just want to follow him and people want to be around him. So when he's playing the way that he's playing, the guys around him feel like they have to take a leap too. Uh, so not only has he impacted his own individual success, but he's impacted his teammates' success and then the team as a whole. Yeah, and we've seen that culturally with this team. Karras in his, uh, his, first po his second post game after the Pacers game talked about, oh man, I had a couple defensive lapses and on this team, that ain't yeah. okay. <laughs> you know, and I do feel like that accountability does come from the top and accountability has been a, a key word that for you guys for the last couple of years and it feels like it's finally really starting to take root. Absolutely. Um, and you said, before you said, you said two All-Stars. The Cavs have two All-Stars. Yes, two. And I think that's, I mean, that's a point of pride should, for us. A should point have been two from Jump two Street, by the yeah. way. Two All-Stars. <laughs> I see Shelly over there. What's going on, Shelly? <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, listen, like, this is exciting. Um, I think to, to the point about Darius and, and what Coach was saying is, you know, not a lot of people were watching us play last year. We were. Mm -hmm. But after the All-Star break, he had a run of games, I think 20, 25 games in a row, where he was one of the best guards in the East. And so this wasn't coming out of nowhere. I think people are more surprised now. But we saw this come in this evolution. Uh, I do think, you know, we'd be remiss not to talk about the trade we made for Jared Allen and that yeah. changing to the trajectory of this franchise. And, you know, Coach has had some wonderful words to let Coach talk about Jared. Uh, but as a human being and what he's about, um, he just embodies everything that we want to be about as a franchise. And the moment that we traded for him, uh, I think that changed our entire, our, our entire trajectory. No, I mean, with Jared, he does all the work every single night that people don't want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in the trenches every single night, scrapping and fighting and wrestling bears, and then protecting his teammates every single possession as well. Uh, and I think, you know, our league and all of us have been so perimeter-oriented now that we forget about the big guys. Yeah. And we forget about how impactful they are and how much they mean, um, you know, to teams. And our defensive success and the early successes that we've had is because Jared's been able to win the trenches for us uh, and put us in the position that we're in. How unique is it to have so many young guys in their early 20s that are already playing such a selfless brand of basketball? Like, if Carter and I started this podcast when we were 22, <laughs> the whole thing would be me talking because I'd be wanting to prove myself and all the time. And still really selfish. To be I, right. I'm still selfish, but you know, I've had growth since then. How, how unique is it to have a group of these young guys that are all like 24 and under that are playing selfless basketball because until the last week, the team didn't have a, a single player averaging over 20 points per game until Darius's recent run. But it, it, everyone, it was just kind of a whoever had the hot hand on any given night, whoever had the best matchup, it was just such a selfless team first mentality. How unique is that? I mean, it's rare. And I'll, I'll be honest with you like, as many places as I've, as I've been and organizations that I've worked with, uh, this is the first place where I've seen it. And that's why typically you don't see young teams win very many basketball games because individually they feel like they have so much to prove. Right. Uh, you know, they're out hunting for contracts, they're out looking for branding and all those things. And, you know, 
credit to the parents and the people who raised the guys that we have. Um, but we have a bunch of guys who are bought into something bigger than themselves. Well, and and they care more about the team. And that's something we've talked about for some time is like, like in the last couple years, Kobe, your organizational philosophy seems to have been, and may, this might be a little bit of an oversimplification, draft dudes who really like playing basketball. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, it's, sure, but that's a big part of it. We talk about yeah, it all the time. It's a huge part yeah, of it. We talk about it all the time. Guys, great attitudes, great work ethic, and I think the third, which is really important, is guys that really want to be in Cleveland, Ohio. Mm. Guys that really want to be a part of this thing. Um, and you can tell when you, they talk about Cleveland, they talk about it with pride. When they talk about coach and the staff and the building and our ownership, they talk about it with pride. And that's really important to us. They want to they, they help elevate this franchise and this city um, to a really high level. And I think that's a big part, a big um, intangible that we look for when we're you know, interviewing guys, um, when we're going through our draft process. We want to know that they're totally bought into being – uh, here and helping the mission. So it might be an oversimplification, but it's a really, really important part of our, our draft process. I mean, one of the things with this team is you can get caught up talking about so many of these guys that have contributed so well, and then you forget about two. And we have two rising stars as well with the Cleveland Cavaliers that are defense first players that, uh, I, I mean, it starts, of course, with Evan Mobley, who, who has given so much excitement this year to the, the fan base. I know Carter and myself, we keep having to readjust our expectations for him because he seems so ahead of the curve. What's it like to see both of those guys rewarded with a Rising Stars appearance? Because you look at the past couple of years and Darius didn't get to make any Rising Stars. And even as a, a Canadian myself, the, the format probably was to blame. I, I love international <laughs> representation, but let, let's time. be honest. Darius probably should have been a rising star. They made an adjustment. They yeah. made an adjustment this year. So. A, a needed adjustment. <laughs> but how, how great is it to see both Isaac and Evan uh, get the opportunity to play together on the Rising Stars team? Well, I think it's a recognition from our league uh, mm. and what they respect in blue-collar guys uh, that impact winning. You know, Isaac may not always have gaudy numbers, but Isaac goes out every single night and has to guard the other team's best perimeter player. That's not an easy task. Uh, and you're asking a you know, 20, now 21-year-old 21 in his second year to go out and do that and still have confidence in himself on nights where it may get rough because those guys are just that good. But the next night he shows up and he does it again. Uh, and you talk about you know, readjusting your markers for Evan. <laughs> we do the same thing. Um, <laughs> I'd have know, to imagine. I, I find myself... You know, because he's not your typical rookie uh, from a mental standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, there aren't those big highs and lows with him. And whatever the moment calls for, he has the ability to go and get it done. Uh, and he doesn't hang on to the first quarter. Like, if he needs to make a play in the fourth quarter, whether it's a shot, a block, a rebound, he can erase all the stuff that happened before and just go out and make that play. Mm -hmm. So uh, his impact on winning, um, you know, is second to none from a rookie I've seen. So I got, I got to ask about this because uh, ESPN's Brian Windhorst had reported that after Summer League, Evan kind of got beat up a little bit, and he kind of called you guys and said, hey, can you help me get bulked up? Like, as someone who's drafting a player who is highly drafted, highly touted, to have him make that call of, like, hey, I need some help. Can you help me? Like, how exciting is that to hear coming out of a Summer League where a guy might just rest on his laurels normally? Well, I mean, the thing that – and he'll talk about more about Evan Mobley, like the coachable – uh, a guy that he is, but he's humble. I mean, he's humble. Um, you know, he, he loves to be coached, but he did that on his own. Uh, he called up our head strength and conditioning coach, Derek Millinder, and said, come out to L.A. and work with me for four straight days. And that's all he did. It wasn't basketball. Um, you know, I think the gym was somewhere in West Hollywood. It was an hour each way from to go. Showed up on time every single day, even with that L.A. traffic, um, and really put the foundation in place for when he came to town. Um, he got pushed around a little bit. He's still going to get pushed around a little bit uh, in this league right now. But you see as the strength is starting to come, the confidence is starting to come, he's going to be scary, uh, mm -hmm. scary good. But he is tremendously coachable. And, I, and, and the thing that I don't think people realize is how, how smart he is. Yeah, and the, the, Kobe's point is he wants you to coach him hard. Um, you know, we were having a conversation uh, with Rondo the other day, and he said, you know, the best part about this group is you can coach your best players hard. Um, and when those guys take coaching, it makes our job that much easier. You know, from Kevin Love on down to our young guys, 
they really let us coach him. And Evan is, you know, obviously his dad was his coach growing up, so he knows what it's like to be coached and knows what you can get from being coached hard. So, uh, you know, we do our best to push him, but he's like a sponge and he wants it all. Mm -hmm. So we just got to make sure we keep providing it for him. Did coach transition to Kevin Love? Did I, he I, I, was, I was already going to go really there. Smart. You know, how well, about the Loverman? You know we're, what? We're, we're brokenhearted. <laughs> it's not a three-point contest it, this year. Well, it's I was no, trying to make that. I was trying to bring that to fruition. But you know, Kev likes his breaks. You know, he wants to a well-earned break. Yes. I, I, I was going to say, like, uh, no wonder Darius is taking off. This is point guard instincts right there. I was going to go to Kevin Love next. This is setting you up for success. The transition on Absolutely. to the. Uh, <laughs> that extra pass. Uh, I gotta admit, like, as a fan, Kevin Love's resurgence and the fact that he's been able to stay healthy this season is one of the things that really resonates for me because it's that connection piece between the two eras of Cleveland Cavaliers basketball and for him to be that leader both on and off the court. Even two years ago, I remember we did an interview with Martin Rickman who did a feature on Colin Sexton who talked about how Kevin would call him. Throughout the offseason, they'd break film down together. He was always in his ear. What's it, what does it mean to see Kevin now be able to contribute on the court in the same way uh, after a very difficult season last year? Where his seasons. Yeah, well, it, where his body just wasn't, uh, I, I mean, it was betraying him, let's be honest. It, it, it was, and I said this before, but I'll say it again, his willingness to sacrifice and accept the role coming off the bench it's impressive. Changed exactly what we wanted to do. Uh, if a guy who's a five-time All-Star, mm -hmm. probably a first ballot Hall of Famer, NBA champion, USA Olympic gold medalist, if he can make a sacrifice, there's nobody else that's on our team that can't sacrifice. Yeah. Uh, and I think that set the tone for this season coming in where the young guys see that. Mm -hmm. And he did it for the greater good of the team. So now the young guys watch that and they can go out and do it. And then you throw in his basketball skill set, right? It, so... <laughs> You know, he carries a gravity with him when he's on the floor. People are going to worry about Kevin where he is. So that opens it up and there's spacing for everybody else. And when you don't, then he has the ability to make you pay. Yeah, well, especially on, on nights where, you know, whether it be because of COVID or injuries, you don't have a backup point guard. It's nice to be able to go to Kevin Love with that second unit and have him initiate offense, direct guys around. Like, I, I have to imagine that makes a big difference. It makes, it makes my job a lot easier. And it makes it you know, harder to guard. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, when you put the ball in a big guy's hands, now you can work both sides of the floor, uh, and it makes you more difficult to guard. Mm. He's having a lot of fun. That's the other part. He's it looks like it. A lot of fun. it really looks He's like it. He's enjoying it, it um, as we all are, and uh, really, really happy for him. I, I got to ask you about what a luxury, JB, it must be to have this group of kids that are in your starting lineup, and then when things do start to get a little fast for them, or it's the third game in four nights and they're starting to look a little heavy, you can go, hey, Vets, Rondo, Love, go calm the kids down. Like, what value does that have for you? I mean, a ton. Uh, it's you know it's funny you say that because we literally have those conversations during timeouts when we get together as a coaching staff in our huddle. Uh, but you know you can go to people you trust. Uh, you know you can go to people in Doe and in Kevin that have been through it all before. You know what I mean? Like there's no moment that those guys haven't seen. There's no lead that they haven't overcome. So you know we had the game the other night in Indiana and we're down. You know I think we gave up 47 points in the first quarter. We're down 20 some points. Uh, and, you know, we put those two guys in the game, and everybody's calm, nobody panics, and they just figure out a way, possession by possession, to crawl back in the game, and we end up pulling out the game in the fourth. Mm -hmm. Let's not also forget, like, with the evolution of Darius Garland, what started that was Ricky Rubio yeah. as well. Yeah. And, you know, I don't think we'll, coaches say, too, we wouldn't be here without Ricky. And then how he pushed us early on, how serious he took everything. Um, and he coached Darius a lot. I mean, to hear Darius talk about his time with Ricky – uh, very meaningful for him. Mm -hmm. and, and so when Ricky went down, we knew we had to replace that leadership right away. Um, and, and Rondo's been huge in that regard. But when you think about Ricky Rubio and Rajon Rondo contributing to Darius's growth, yeah. you had two Hall of Famers that are the smartest at their profession, at their position, helping make and mold a 21-year-old who just turned 22. <laughs> and so that, that goes into his evolution as well. I got to ask, JB, how often do you find yourself getting ready to bark something that Darius and Rondo or Rubio was already there it, it, correcting? It happens all the time. You know, it happens <laughs> all the time. And, you know, if you, you watch our guys, too, 
our guys are really engaged when they're not in the game. Yeah. I get told all the time by the referees to tell your guys to go sit down. <laughs> I, get call from the front, I get a call from the NBA league office. Tell you, I'm not telling anybody down. Right. I'm not telling anyone to sit down. Right. They're having a good time. And so they're there right away. You know, a ball goes in the basket. We make some, you know, if we make a defensive mistake or whatever, and they're there right away telling them, hey, this is what you got to do. Uh, you know, you know, these are the actions that we can run because so-and-so needs a touch. Um, you know, again, so the togetherness of it all and how they're helping one another, like, that's the best part of this job every single day. Kobe, how do you navigate the growing expectations? Because Carter and I were, I'd say, optimistic coming into this year, and it kind of feels like everybody was wrong about the Cleveland Cavaliers. It just depends how wrong you were. Like, <laughs> there are varying degrees of how wrong. How do you navigate uh, whether it's the rest of this season or the next few years, um, both understanding that these guys are young and, and that the, their best days are probably years down the road, while also supplementing uh, their talent with the right guys and, and figuring out the balance of when to kind of make that move to really make a push to eventually compete for a championship. So I think a few things is one, the expectations are going to come, right? Mm -hmm. Next year, the years after, we want that. We want those expectations. Um, we've had that here for a long time. This year, we really want it to be about organic growth. And we talked about taking a step forward. Yes. I think we've taken a, a large step forward. But let's keep that organic growth and fun and, 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 and growing together and not put unfair expectations on a really young team. Mm -hmm. That being said, no one's, no one's putting a limit on it either. No. Um, and, 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 and they've take, you can't tell them anything. You know, they, they want to win and they want to go as far as they possibly can. So we're not putting a ceiling on it. Um, but right now we're, we're excited about, you know, this, this growth process that's super organic, that's fun. You know, putting the league on notice, having two all-stars, having guys in the rising, two guys in the rising stars, having three guys in the skills. Those are all really meaningful steps for a franchise. Before this season started, we had zero national TV games. <laughs> zero. The disrespect. They finally flexed us to one against Toronto, I think, later this month. So, thank you. But a As a league pass uh, yeah, viewer, I yeah. do appreciate that, yeah, though. We, we are number one league pass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do get a lot of league pass love. But um, <laughs> next year, I think that's going to change, right? Yes. Now it's going to be more national TV games. We're going to be on TNT. Like, that stuff's going to come. Mm. But let's not rush it. Let's enjoy this year for what it is. And when the expectations come, we'll be ready for them. Well, in the interest of keeping things fun, we understand that sitting with us can't be the most fun. Uh, you, 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 you both a, you are busy. Weekend, you both guys. are busy, and we definitely appreciate your time. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you for this season, honestly. As a yeah, fan, this I has mean. been just a wild ride to, uh, to take it all in and, and try to figure out how to talk about it without sounding like an idiot because it, it seems every time we put some sort of limit on this team, they seem to exceed it. So to both thank of you, you thank much. you. Thank you. Before we go, Coach, anything about the fans? Because they have been electric this year. Our building is unbelievable. That's, I think, something that, you know, we can't go without saying is, you know, you think about some of the games when we make our runs uh, and the energy that's in the building and our guys feeding off of that. Um, you know, this has not been uh, unlike any place I've ever been where I feel the momentum shifting, and it starts with our fans uh, getting behind our guys. So thank you. Yeah, the last two home games have gotten to playoff level loud. <laughs> Which is awesome. Like I guess it, we'll it's just have feverish to, pitch. It's I got guess to, we'll just have to keep it up. It's got yeah. the playoff level loud. We need it. The players love it. So thank you very much to the fans. We would not be here without you. We appreciate you guys very much. Thank you. Big thanks. All right. Absolutely. Thank, thank, you, thank you both so much. Thank I really you, appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate it, fellas. Thank you. All right, Justin, you want to put a bow on this thing? I will. Thank, thank you very you. much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much to everyone that's here live. And uh, for those that you don't, that don't know, uh, we are the Chase Down Podcast. You can find us wherever you get your podcasts, as well as live on the Cavs YouTube channel. We go live there. Um, Twice we, a week, baby. Absolutely. Uh, we appreciate the support of anyone that has checked us out. If you haven't, I encourage you to do so, or at least click download. You know, that, that'll work, too. Yeah, I'm we don't fine. care if you listen. We yeah, just want the download fine. numbers, <laughs> ultimately. <laughs> and if you do want to support us, you can leave us a rating, leave a review, subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, and help us cook those books. Thank you so much to everyone uh, here today, and until next time, go Cavs. Go Cavs.